Hello everyone, I'm back. Let me show you what I've got. All right, I spent a lot of yesterday working on the hood. I had the other side pretty much uh, dialed in, uh, the driver's side. Now I copied it over to the passenger side uh, using my template gauge, which is over there. Um, the back edge is not finished, and the reason is because when I open the hood, I have to make sure it's not going to hit the windshield. So before I cut this back edge, um, I need to see where, how far back it can go. So I will do that um, today. Uh, the reason I didn't do it before is I wanted all of this to harden, solidify, so that I didn't mess anything up. So um, once I got to this state, I stopped and moved on to work on the back. The reason I worked on the back is I thought I was going to use foam to fill it in, the spray foam, um, and it takes 24 hours or so to uh, harden, to cure. And um, so I needed to get it going. I ended up not doing that approach. It was one of the many approaches I could have used. Let me show you what I did. Uh, people have been asking me, well, why don't you just use clay or foam or whatever the heck you're going to use to shape this? Well, I did. They obviously missed the videos. I've got over 100 videos, so apparently they didn't see the ones where I used the foam. Uh, this eyebrow area, all of this eyebrow area is nothing but foam with fiberglass and body filler on top of it. So I got it as close as I could with foam. Then I put a layer of fiberglass on it, and then I used body filler to... Uh, finalize it. So you can see here this part of it. I did that. Uh, this was all foam. Uh, I put the aluminum tape on top of it because like I showed in the front the uh, polyester resin attacks this pink foam. Um, so I put the aluminum tape on there to keep that from happening because I spent all the time getting the shape that I wanted. Uh, the other advantage is that uh, the fiberglass doesn't stick to the uh, aluminum tape. It does sometimes, it doesn't sometimes, you never know. But anyway, in this case, it didn't. So what I ended up with is a shell here on top of what the foam was. Fiberglass, obviously, where it was on top of the uh, aluminum tape. And then if you look, you can see it's a combination of fiberglass and body filler. Uh, to get the, the final shape and of course then there's primer on top of that all right so what I did was I went in and I cut out sections of this uh, foam here what I needed to do is mirror image what was here over to the other side so I got a two by four I just needed something that was a standard size so I got a two by four so all right that'll be a good spacer to use so I use a spacer as a two by four I also cut a piece of cardboard here. It's just a, a a and w software soft drink thing. And I mark things, uh, said spacer. This happens to be exactly the same size as said two by four. So I went in here on where this foam was and then I marked, first I needed, I knew I needed an edge here uh, to put this skin on the skin so I, and I didn't want it all the way to the edge because I need to be able to trim the edge uh, we'll get to that later so I had to move it in some amount I just randomly picked a finger width basically an inch about and so I took the foam and I cut that piece out what I did was I took this piece and put it on the opposite side flipped it 180 put it on the opposite side I'll show you that in a minute and then I went in and said, okay, let's leave about an inch piece right here, a bridge here, so that when I go to put this back on, it has something to sit on. Okay. And what I had actually done was I went in and said, well, I'm going to make it the width of a two by four. Okay. So I put this on here. I put this on there like so. Marked it again did another inch, did the, the two by four again, another inch, all the way down. And then I cut out each one of these one inch sections, 
flipped it 180 degrees. I came over here to the other side and let me show you what I've got here because it's gonna be hard to do with uh, only one hand. I, I laid all of those pieces over here on this side. Uh, the board was just to keep that from blowing away overnight. <sighs> laid all of those pieces on here, flipped them 180 and got the shape of the eyebrow over here. Let me pull this off. Oh, and then I hot glued everything down, which of course the hot glue got stuck to my fiberglass cloth. Okay, on this back section here, I was able, because it's relatively flat, I was able to just take it, flip it 180 degrees. The contour's not going to be exact, but it's going to be close enough for what I'm doing. Remember, that's about a hundred thousandths of an inch thick between the body filler and the uh, fiberglass, so I can be off a hundred thousandths. I need a hundred thousandths of thickness here anyway, so it doesn't have to be ultra critical because I have to fill it with uh, more fiberglass. This is a single layer of uh, fiberglass cloth that's only eight thousandths of an inch thick. If you look, it's not ultra strong. I mean, I can sit there and flex it, so it needs more thickness there regardless. All right, so I cut all of those pieces. I initially was trying to do it in the, the blocks. I put a bridge here, and then I put the two by four here, and then I put the next bridge in, and then I did the two by four and the next bridge. And so I had about, oh, I don't know, four or five of these. Uh, bridges across here. At that point, I had a choice. I could either fill in in between with some kind of expanding foam or even use the pink foam blocks, put it in between, and then sand it smooth to where I used each of the bridges every three and a half inches as a reference. And so I would just smooth the area in between the bridges and the bridges were my reference to say, okay, I'll sand it until I see the bridge and then I'll stop and that'll make it the right shape. That would work. I also could have just uh, laid fiberglass over it, but it would have sagged in between each of those bridges. So I didn't really want to do that. It would work again because I have to put more fiberglass and body filler on. Uh, the way I ended up doing it, I didn't think I wanted to do it this way because it was tedious, but I decided I was going to go ahead and do it. I took that section over there, the foam section over there with the aluminum tape and I cut one inch sections all the way through flipped each one 180 degrees and came over here and glued them down. Now you can see what you end up with when you do that though is a stair step because it's curving one direction or slanting one direction. And then when you flip it 180, it's exactly the opposite. So if let's say over there from the back to the front, it's going uphill. Well, then when I flip each of these sections, each one of these is going downhill. So I end up with a stair step. All of that says, okay, now the middle of each one of these pieces theoretically is the right height. This is too high, this is too low, but that middle. So I could take all of this aluminum tape off of here, sand this until I hit the middle of each one of these pieces. I would still have the depression in between, but the high spot or the middle spot of each one would be at theoretically the exact right spot. But since I need to add material on top, I could also just take some body filler or a piece of fiberglass like I just showed you, lay it on top of it, and the high spot in most cases is less than that tenth of an inch, so it's not going to impact it. Here's where the, this approach kind of falls apart. When you have something like this where it curves in heavily and it slants heavily, you can see that these pieces, the stair steps really noticeable, especially this one right here, because it's slanted a whole lot in the opposite direction again. It should be higher in the back, lower in the front, but because I flipped it 180. This one right here, I flipped it over because there was no way to get this one to look right. Uh, this is actually the surface that was glued against uh, but again, it's close enough because I have to uh, finish it anyway. 
at this point not sure exactly what i'm going to do i'll figure it out in a little bit like i showed you i had the fiberglass on top of here and let me just lay this like i said i knew this would be hard to do one-handed but i'll just roughly do it there we go smooth it out a little bit and you can see that it's got the basic shape but it's lumpy because of that up and down and up and down uh, again i can decide whether i want to put a layer of uh, body filler on top of here to smooth this out before i put the fiberglass on or i can do it the other way put the fiberglass on and then put a layer of body filler on six of one half a dozen other i don't know uh, the other issue is right where uh, this meets the uh, aluminum tape doesn't have a smooth finish right there. So I could either cut that edge off of the aluminum tape or I can smooth it out with my finger. And then uh, same thing here that because it's slanted the wrong way, especially right there, you can see, remember on the other side, it would have slanted the other way. So the right spot is smack in the middle there this one's too short that one's too long but again because i'm going to extend it it really the spot should be like right out there oh uh, let's see what else do i have i think that's it so that's what i'm going to do today i'm going to go ahead and fill this in uh like i said i haven't decided which approach i'm going to use i'm going to use one of those approaches fill this in finish that I still have this other cap over here that I made previously, and it actually goes right here. It won't go in because um, I need to trim this edge. I purposely made it a little bit long. So when I cut that, this will go down. You can't even see, but there's a shelf right inside there. The, this goes down in between here, so that area has to be cut away. I'll just use my multi-tool to cut that away. So when I do that, this part right here, then I, that'll give me the reference for this outside edge. And I can go ahead and get this part of it pretty much the right shape. And then I need to do the same thing for the part that's missing right here. If you look over there, this uh, angle continues up to here and then comes out to here like this does. So if I took this and put it there, um, I need something similar to that um, over here. That's going to be tedious. I don't know of an easy way uh, to do that. I'll have to rack my brain. I do have my template gauges that I can use. And again, the same thing, make a bridge periodically across here by using that side and transferring it over. I might do that. Um, the other thing is when I did this, I cut away all of them except for the back and the front. The reason why is when I put this piece back in place, it needs something to rest on to give it the right height and orientation. So this one right here, I did the same thing. Uh, you can't see it because I hot glued it down. This is, was exactly like that. There's a piece right here, uh, a foam right there. There's a piece of foam right here. And then I just hot glued this in place. So this is secure in place. What I'll do later is fiberglass uh, the gap in between here. Let me see if you can see it. There we go. Inside of there is that piece. So I'll take fiberglass and put it to fill that in and basically make a spacer that will space this off. Um, all right, let's see what else. Oh, so the way this is going to work is when I make the molds, the mold will be this top surface and then however thick uh, I make the panels. And then the spacers, I will, I will make them, duplicate them and put the spacers on top of the C8, and then that will allow me to attach this. Once I do that, I will open up the trunk in this case, and I will cut away all of the uh, C8 uh, hood that's there, or trunk, or whatever the body panel is. 
Someone brought up the issue that the uh, C8 body is uh, SMC sheet molded compound. It's basically plastic, fiber reinforced plastic. The parts that I'm making are fiberglass. Uh, they don't they don't get along well. Um, I just this morning ordered a special SMC uh, body filler to attach the fiberglass to the SMC. The stuff that you use for fiberglass, they say, does not adhere to SMC well because the expansion of uh, coefficient of expansion is different between the two. But it does the the SMC filler does work with both fiberglass and the SMC. The only place that that's going to matter is where I am blending my new panels, fiberglass in this case, into the C8 body. So right here, this would be an issue where these two meet because the coefficient of expansion is going to be different. What they say may happen is hairline cracks uh, can end up appearing. Another place is these places that we are going to have to fill in. There aren't very many of them, um, but like right here, I want to get rid of this crease. We forgot about it. I want to get rid of this crease right here. So I would just put body filler on here. Well, I'm going to have that issue that the coefficient of expansion is going to be different. Um, the thing that helps though, is that it's only where the two surfaces meet that it's an issue as much. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and fill this in with regular body filler, do the same thing that I did here, make a skin and then use the SMC compound where the two interface with each other. And that way that will help with the uh, coefficient of expansion issue. Won't completely eliminate it, but it'll help with it. Again, when I make my molds, that all goes away because I will be making my body out of carbon fiber. I think that has everything covered. Um, it's just the process of doing everything. So let me go ahead and get to that. And I will see you next time. Like, subscribe, hit the alert, do the thanks if you want to. And if you haven't figured out by now what I'm doing, you don't know Jack. Bye.